Our instrument pack will generate several hundred thousand bytes of data in the form of temperature, pressure, altitude, and GPS coordinates. We'll cover the camera and its recording needs in a future podcast. In this one, we'll be adding a micro SD card data logger from SparkFun to record those data points. The open log data logger from SparkFun is barely bigger than the micro SD card it was designed to hold. One side has the slot for the card, and the other side has the onboard controller that manages reading and writing to it. All in all, it's a pretty slick little device. We originally were going to wire up this baby to a 5-wire socket, then attach it to our protoshield like we did the temperature and pressure sensor. However, we decided that that was overkill and would just add some unnecessary wires to the mix. We bought some 22 gauge solid hookup wire in five colors. Black, red, yellow, green, and orange. And cut a length of each to attach to our data logger breakout board. For our data logger, we actually needed a length of each of the five colors. Black for ground, red for power, yellow for, re- yellow for reset, green for transmit, and orange for receive. In addition, we'll need the data logger component itself, and, of course, the proto shield. We started by attaching the wires to the data logger. Huh. Looks like an electronic octopus. Yeah, and Technicolor, and missing three appendages. Good point. Moving on, we then hooked it up to the Arduino to make sure that we understood how it would work. The original wiring diagram we found has us hooking up to the digital pins 0 and 1 on the board. They're serial, receive, and transmit pins, respectively. That, however, would interfere with the USB connection. Before we could upload a new version of the balloon sketch, we needed to disconnect the transmit and receive lines, and then reconnect them once it was loaded. Not a complete deal breaker, but it felt a little clumsy. I kept digging, looking for a better way, and found it with the software serial library. This library allowed us to define whatever pins we wanted to be the transmit and receive. We consulted our original planned layout and found that two and found two pins that were not previously going to be used, pins 11 and 12. If we could redefine the data logger to use those pins, it would free up the default serial transmit and receive for the USB connection and we wouldn't have to temporarily disable the logger while we uploaded a new sketch. As a result of that change, and our decision to wire up directly to the pins rather than using a socket, we've revised our original plan for the data logger. We decided to place the data logger off to the side to keep it out of the way of the other components as much as possible. The hookup wire we were using was stiff enough that the logger wouldn't move very much once we had it soldered in. However, That also meant we'd have a hard time bending the wires to get them to fit in their respective holes on the board. So we trimmed them down to minimize that. Here it is, completely soldered onto the proto shield. Now it was time for the test. We hooked everything up and fired up our sketch. We let it record some data for several seconds and then unplugged it. We popped out the micro SD card and transferred it to a USB card reader we purchased. That allowed us to read the micro SD card like any other USB drive. We opened the data file that was created on it and saw exactly what we expected. From left to right, then, we have temperature in degrees Celsius, pressure in pascals, altitude above sea level in meters, and placeholders for latitude and longitude. Now comes a fun part. We needed to do two calculations. First, if we are taking measurements every second, can we actually write the data to the micro SD card that quickly? And second, if we are making log entries every second, will we have enough room on the micro SD card to capture data for the entire flight? First, the write speed. We are writing data to the card at the speed of 9,600 bits per second. There are eight bits in a byte. Did you know that four bits equals one nibble? You're kidding me, right? Nope. Proof that computer scientists and engineers have a sense of humor. Anyway, 9,600 bits per second and 8 bits per byte means that we are writing at the speed of 1,200 bytes per second. 
how did bytes translate into characters like numbers, commas, and periods? Well, each one of those characters is a single byte. So, as long as we are trying to write fewer than 1,200 characters per second, we should be okay. So far, our log entries have been just over 30 characters long, and it looks by the time we get into longitude and latitude, and there, there will still be fewer than 40 characters per entry. If our system can write to the micro SD card at the maximum rate of 1,200 bytes per second, then we could write 30 times more data per second than we are planning. I think we'll be fine. Now for the second question. How many log entries can we store on the micro SD card? Well, we determined that each log entry will end up being about 40 bytes long. Our card has a 8 gigabytes of storage space. That's 8 billion with a B bytes. If we are making log entries per, once per second and each log entry is 40 bytes, how long will it take us to fill up the entire card? Well, 8 billion bytes represents 200 million log entries, which means we'll fill up the card after 200 million seconds, which is 55,555 hours or 6.3 years. 6.3 years? I'm pretty sure that the batteries will run down first. No kidding. That's it for this component. The updated sketch can be found in the balloonsketch.zip archive on Daz SkyDrive, which can be found at tinyurl.com slash markgilbertsource. Four bits is really called a nibble, huh? Yep. Next, you'll tell me that 12 bits is called an overbite? <laughs> nice one, but no. Anything else before we close this podcast out? Well, I will say this. Doing separate podcasts for each component hopefully makes it easy to consume. You might say that they're bite-sized. Ugh. <sighs>